Apologies, it's been a while. I've received a couple of, I think we can call them subtle hints. Um, one of the comments passed was, is it still cold in your shed? Uh, Mr. Hopewell, thank you for that comment. And I've decided that it's about time I actually produced a video, which I haven't for a while. This is the original, my version of a tool set and gauge, which is great. Set it on, turn the magnet on, and it gives you the tool height. I don't have many tool holders. And what I find with this particular design is, I think you can actually see that if you release it, which you need to do to adjust the height, there's a lot of movement and a lot of wobble in there. And until you actually set it again, or tighten it back into position, because obviously it's not on dovetails, then you get the true reading. The problem I got is the fact that even though my lathe is lifted up so I can work standing straight, not stooping over, I have got to bend over to actually see between the gauge and the actual tool and see if there's a gap there. Now bending over isn't a problem for most people. For me, it's quite painful. And I would prefer you to keep your thoughts clean on this one. So I thought I'd make something which is a little easier for myself. So during my absence from recording videos, I had two visitors. One was Paul, or three visitors, Hopewell, the shed dweller and his lovely wife, and also Ollie from Ollie's workshop came down. And Ollie brought me some nice bit of brass bar, a couple of brass bolts, a bit of stainless rod, and a couple of other little bits and pieces as well, which are not really relevant to what we're doing. So out of one of these lovely brass bars, I made this little block, threaded hole, threaded hole, six millimeter reamed hole, and a little insect grub screw. I also made this plate with a zero marked on it, and my little maker's stamp. And I was thinned down on the back to make it a little bit lighter. I haven't polished this yet. I did try and do a nice job on this, and I will say at this point, that no precision was used or harmed in the making of this product. The brass bar, which I had on the shelf, I driddled out to make it into a tube, which fitted into there. It's quite precise, and they actually fit, I was quite pleased with. Then, out of another bit of this, I made this hammer, if you want to call it. Um, ream six mil hole, a bit of welding rod stuck in the top, Drilled and tapped hole, and that was that part. Standard Allen bolt, was machined down out of the brass bolt. I made a brass bush bearing. I would have used a roller or needle bearing or ball bearing if I had one, but I didn't, so I just thought I'd make it out of the brass and out of the head. I made a little thumb wheel. So let's put it together and you can see what I've done. The original little magnet. Now we screw in a piece of the stainless bar that Ollie quite kindly provided. We take the hammer and my one oh class as the flag and also this and that fits into there, quite snugly, gonna make sure she's all in alignment. I'll probably soft solder this together if it's right, but what I wanna do is get some proper tube and actually make this longer. You'll see the reason why, I'll explain the reason why uh, in a moment. You take the hammer part, which has a slot in the back, and that slot sits over the little grub screw. Oh, almost forgot, the bush which goes in the back. It's not very easy this, doing it with a camera in your centre of your mush. Drop that into there. Do my best to try and line it up. Again, I'm doing this somewhat blind. So that's free to move. We take the six millimeter threaded anvil, I suppose you could call it. I 
the screws into there. The little locking wheel. I just realised I'm doing this left handed. Why am I doing this left handed? Perhaps I should turn it around to be easier for me. Okay. Amazing that. Right hand thread. Using the right hand, it goes straight on. Beautiful. And that is that. Now, like you've seen the little grub screw in the back, it means it restricts the travel of this arm. And basically, that fits down on top of there. Utilising the old plastic thumb turn because I haven't gone around to making a nice little brass one. And I have actually tried to do this to some sort of a finish. Which is not like me, everything is just normally quick, it's prototyped. Right, I've already preset the height of the actual arm before showing this part of the video. But basically, what you do, you come in, you drop the anvil, which is obviously perfectly flat, right on the tip of the tool. I switch on the magnet, and as you can see from the indicator, it's low to the left, it's high to the right. And if I turn that, give it a little pull, tighten up more again because it keeps wobbling a bit more touch more and there you have it and believe me I've tried this and it's absolutely spot on now what I said about the tube as Jonas was talking to the other day about this my um, my friend out in Germany as he pointed out if the needle is longer you have more accuracy because obviously you've got a, a bigger distance between the two points. So if I get a piece of tube and actually extend it to that height, double the length of that, it means that it's going to be a lot more accurate, which I will do. But obviously I couldn't bore this out to six millimetres to so any given length. I had literally the length of the drill bit. It might look a bit poncy. Um, some of you might even laugh at it actually, but it does work. And it means that I'm no longer trying to bend over with three blown discs in my back to look at the contact point between the tool and the leveling gauge. I can now just stand straight and look straight down at the needle. I've even named it. Because the materials are supplied by Ollie, it's the Ollie tool setter. And you just add an iron, it's Otis. So that's what I'm going to call it from now on. That's Otis. Hope you've enjoyed. Thanks very much for all the new subscribers. In fairness, you've kept subscribing even though I haven't been producing. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I hope you like this. Um, I don't mind a couple of sarcastic comments in the um, co uh, comment section or wherever else. And I'll try and get something out really soon. Later. <laughs>